All right, in the uh, first video, I went over how to set up the change gears on this lathe. That's, that's unique to this lathe or any lathe without, without a quick change gearbox. Um, now we're going to move on to actual tool setup and uh, <clears throat> tool setup for actually cutting the thread. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, here's the blank. I'm, I'm going to use this for the nut. It's just a piece of steel with a hole board in it. Well, you, you want to probably want to ask how I know what size diameter to hold the drill for that. Well, that's <clears throat> that's what you need this guy for. This is the machinery's handbook. This is uh, something every machinist should have. It's it's all the information you'll ever need as a machinist. So what I, what I need to do? If you remember the first uh, first thread we cut was a one inch twelve three A thread. That's that's a close tolerance thread. It has uh, zero allowance on it. All right. <clears throat> um, so we're going to cut a, a class three thread for the nut as well. Except as it, since this is an internal thread, it's it's classified as a three B instead of a three A. So we look up on the chart and we look for the minor diameter of this thread that we're going to cut. All right, one inch twelve, three B. The di minor diameter ranges from 0 0.9100 to 0 0.9198. That's 910 to 920, somewhere in between. So I bored this hole about to oh, 914, 915, right in the middle. <clears throat> okay, the next thing we want to talk about is. Uh, what angle to set the compound at? There, there are a lot of choices for an internal thread, um, but not so many good choices for the Atlas lathe, unfortunately. Um, one angle you can set the compound on is you can swing it to the left on 30 degrees, about there, <clears throat> and you can you can bore or you can cut your thread this way. Whoops. But to do this, in order to clear, clear the rotating chuck, you have to extend the boring bar quite a ways out of the out of the uh, the holder. And the Atlas lathe doesn't like that because it's a light lathe and it's not very rigid. So if you get boring bar, you know a lot of overhang on your boring bar, you're going to get chatter when you try and use it, and uh, a lot of spring in the setup. So another option is to swing the uh, compound over on this angle, 30 degrees, to the right of, of, of the axis on the cross slide. This is the same way we cut the uh, external thread. If we do this, we need to cut on the back side of the bore. In other words, we need to flip our tool bed over, flip it over so it's cutting on the back side. And to do that, we have to run the spindle in reverse. Well, you can't do that on an atlas lathe because the spindle's threaded on, or the chuck's threaded onto the spindle. If you try and cut on the back side with the spindle running in, verse, in reverse, what's going to happen is the chuck's going to unscrew and fall on your lathe or your foot, one of the two. So don't do that. That's, that's not a good option. Um, third option is you can swing the uh, compound over to the back and offset it 30 degrees off axis on the back side, which is right about there. Okay and cut on the front. All of these uh, all of these options um, set the tool so it's cutting on the leading edge. Okay? <clears throat> Tool's moving in from right to left, it's cutting on the left side. Um, this is probably the lesser of three evils for this lathe. It's, it's not ideal because it puts the compound dial on the back and it's kind of hard to to see what's going on, but I think that's probably the best option in this case. So that's that's what I'm going to use. So let's dial the compound in on 30 degrees, not 29. Those of you who have watched my first threading video on cutting the external thread, I went over that. Um, I guess I can go over it again on this one if you didn't see that video. But uh, I do all my threading with the compound set on 30 degrees. And there's several reasons for that. Um, number one, it's not confusing. You don't have to wonder, oh, well, you know, am I going to set it on 29? Which side of uh, 29? Which side of 30 do I want to set it at? Is it, uh, you know, I know, I know the reason behind it. It's, it's, it's so when you feed your tool bit in, it cuts mostly on the leading edge and, and just a little bit on the other edge. But it's really not 
it really has no real purpose because if you just set it on 30 degrees and you cut in, you feed most of your thread or cut most of your thread, and then you switch over to the cross slide and finish up. Remember, I said when we ground this tool, we're grounding, grinding a form tool. Okay, as soon as you start feeding that tool in with the cross slide, you're cutting on both sides and you just cancel out any any angular misalignment you had before. So it, you can set this on 35 degrees, cut your thread. As long as you come out enough on the cross slide to clean up the thread, that it's going to work out fine. So uh, I always set it on 30 degrees. Don't worry about all the, you know, all the, the slight clearances and stuff the traditional method uses. Um, all right, let's make sure everything's locked down on the compound. Don't want anything to move. This is a pretty coarse thread, so we're going to be putting some heavy loads on it. All right, now the next thing we want to do is we want to get our tool bit uh, on the center line, you know, parallel with the center line, or perpendicular to the center line of the part. Easiest way to do that is just to, well, if you have a piece of paper, you can throw a piece of paper underneath like I showed you with the external thread. I don't have a work light here to illuminate it, but it should be a little easier to see what's going on. Man, this is not ideal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball it with the ways underneath. Get pretty darn close that way. Right about there. Another thing we got to do is make sure the tool bit is on center up and down vertically. It's a little bit high now, so let's rotate it. Rotate it down a little bit. Okay, all I'm doing is sighting over the over the gauge along my ways. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty good on center vertically, so let's tighten it down. <clears throat> One thing, when you're using a boring bar, especially on a light lathe like this, you want to have as little bit of the boring bar sticking out of the holder as, as you need or as possible. No more than absolute, absolutely necessary. Just to keep you know keep it as rigid as possible. All right, let's see here. Where are we at? All right. Now I think we can want to at this point we're going to want to center our dials, both our cross slide and our compound dial. Uh, the compound's easy. We're going to be feeding this way, so we want to rotate it clockwise. So let's just do that now and stop on zero. So that one's all zeroed out. Okay, now we're going to go inside the bore, turn the spindle on, and we're going to back out the, the cross slide until we just scratch the surface of the bore. So let's do that. on a bore, but if you look, look underneath the boring bar, you can see the scratch in the bore when it's in the tool bit like this. Right about there. Okay, so let's set our dial to zero on there, on the cross slide. Now what I'm going to do, let's set our cross slide back to zero, and we'll feed the compound in about a thousandth of an inch, and we'll take a cut, then we can check and make sure our, our change gears are set up right, make sure we're cutting 12 threads per inch. Before we do that, let us uh, let me just give you a quick look at the uh, thread dial here. I went over that in another video, but I want to make sure everybody knows how to engage that. 
see it's rotating. We're cutting an even number of threads so we can engage on any numbered line or any unnumbered line. Here's the indicator mark. So you just engage your half nut as the line's coming up. Right there. Okay. When you get to the end of the thread, then you just disengage it. Let me just show you how far you, you don't want to get off. Okay, that's, that's, that's a bad deal. That'll cut about a half a thread. You want to make sure you're right on the line, right there. All right, let's zoom in on the... Uh, where all the action's going to take place. Cut. Okay, now I'm going to retract the tool using the cross slide. So I moved, moved it in, and then I'll move it back out to zero. That's so you pull the tool bit out of the uh, out of the thread, so you don't drag it on the uh, the bore as it's coming back out. All right, you can see a thread going on there. Um, it's kind of hard to measure. It's kind of hard to measure the pitch of a thread inside a bore like that. But if you if you get one of these uh, thread gauges, screw pitch gauges. They're all numbered, different threads per inch. We'll find a 12. Here's a 12. Okay, one of these guys. We can put that in there and make sure we're getting 12 threads per inch. Best I can see, it looks pretty good. So we're going to call that good. Alright, let's back, 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 zoom back out here and uh, start cutting this thread.